Animation as an art form is extremely versatile and creative and ingenious in a lot of ways. From simple flash animation to complex hand-drawn animations, there's so many ways to tell a story visually. And my personal all-time favorite is the incredible art form that is stop-motion animation. Stop-motion animation is incredibly time-consuming, moving everything one frame physically at a time. But that just means that it takes so much passion, patience, and a serious drive to make something incredible. I thought I'd pay homage to the incredible art form that is stop motion by looking at its history and seeing where we started and where we are. I'm Richard Nemo, and on today's episode of Tales from Animation History, I'm talking about the history of stop motion animation. Let's get started. If you want to know the very beginning of stop motion, you have to go back, and I mean way back in history. According to my research, the very first stop motion animated film was in 1897. Titled The Humpty Dumpty Circus, this film was made by J. Stuart Blackton and Albert E. Smith by moving their daughter's circus toy set one frame at a time. Now sadly, this film is lost media. No footage of it survives because it happened so long ago. However, Guinness credits it as the very first animated film of all time, which is insane to wrap your head around, but it's even sadder that it's lost. Now once people figured out they can make objects magically move on screen, the art form trucked on, being used a lot in movies for title cards, but later on, it was used in even more experimental ways. One of the most famous uses of stop motion in early cinema is in the 1933 classic King Kong, which used stop motion to bring its giant characters to life. Nowadays we have CGI, which we love to use to cheaply render stuff, but back then if they wanted a giant gorilla to exist in the real world, they had to animate it, like physically, with puppets. Well, Denim, the airplane's got it. Oh, no. It wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the beast. In 1955, stop motion got a more mainstream appeal after NBC picked up what became the classic franchise that is Gumby. It was one of the, if not the first, full-length stop motion animated series of all time. The fact that it aired on a mainstream network like NBC really pushed its appeal, and people fell in love with Gumby. Gumby is a huge franchise now, with multiple series under his belt, a full-length movie, and merchandise, making him a staple of pop culture. This lovable green clay creature and his horse Pokey have really won the heart of America, and they're a great example of what early stop motion looked like. All right, you blockheads, return every bag to the Mayans. Another notable and famous use of stop motion in cinema is in the 1963 film Jason and the Argonauts. This movie beautifully blended stop motion and live action to create just some seriously stunning cinema. Thanks to stop motion, an army of skeletons could spring to life, and it even allowed a seven-headed hydra to be in the film, which the director Ray Harryhausen claims he deeply regretted as the animation process went on. Needless to say, without Ray's hard work, the incredible special effects of this movie would not have been possible. He definitely did a great job. Just look at this! This looks so good! This is in the 60s, man! Cut to 1975 when stop motion finally got the critical acclaim it deserved. I'm talking about when the stop motion short Closed Mondays won an Oscar. This film follows a drunk man hallucinating in an art museum that has a lot more going on than it seems at face value. Now this was the 70s, so this is definitely a trippy art film, and the stop motion definitely adds to its like eeriness. It's definitely worth watching, it's, it's very short, but it was really cool seeing something that was stop motion win an Oscar. In the end, the old man becomes a statue in the art museum. It's trippy, man, it was the 70s. Here I am on my knees, doomed to wear this sorrowful face, scrubbing this cold stone floor forever and forever and forever. As the years rolled on, stop motion was used very prominently to be blended with live action to create incredible special effects. One of the most notable uses of this is in the classic movie Star Wars. Stop motion was used by Industrial Light and Magic in the Star Wars franchise to bring the AT-AT walkers to life. If you look back and watch it now, you can definitely tell that was stop motion animation, and it was blended perfectly. Wish George Lucas would've stopped there instead of moving on to CGI. Ooh. In 1993, we got one of the most famous stop motion films of all time, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Is it a Christmas movie? Is it a Halloween? movie, you guys decide down in the comments, but we can all agree that it's a great movie. Now this is the highest grossing stop motion animated film of all time, to this day, grossing over 50 million dollars. I know Tim Burton gets a lot of credit for this movie and it's seen as one of the classic Tim Burtons, but a lot of the credit should go to Henry Selick, who directed the film, as well as two other amazing stop motion films, James the Giant Peach and later on Coraline. He's probably the single greatest stop motion director of all time, so just credit where credit's due there. This year, Christmas will be ours! In 1995, we got another big staple in stop motion, Wallace and Gromit. These two lovable British characters starred in several stop motion short films and even a feature length film. The BBC even called them some of the best known and best loved stars to come out of the UK. The same creators also gave us Chicken Run in 2000, which, just a great movie, everyone should watch Chicken Run, but it's another example of a stop motion series getting widespread mainstream appeal and being cemented in pop culture. Everybody knows the moon's made of cheese. 
finally, I'm going to end on where stop motion is today with what I like to call the Leica a like a generation, like a generation, like yeah, I don't know. Leica changed the stop motion game forever, and I mean it. The company formed officially in 2005, got Henry Selleck, who made The Nightmare Before Christmas and James of the Giant Peach, and came out the gates running with Coraline. Now, personally, I feel like Coraline is the single greatest piece of stop motion art ever made. That's just my opinion, but you have to admit, it's pretty incredible to have that be your first movie. The film was a massive success financially, nearly doubling its budget, and it nabbed a few Academy Award nominations, too. After that, they were off to the races. Paranorman was their second commercial effort, which again was a major hit and got them yet another Academy Award nomination. Jeez. Box Trolls came after that to just as much critical praise, and finally, they released their latest animated epic that was Kubo and the Two Strings. Kubo and the Two Strings is truly a master of the craft, technically speaking, and I stand by the fact that Kubo is the greatest piece of technical stop motion animation to ever come out. This film is beautiful, it is incredible, the science behind it, the mechanics behind it is amazing. They truly challenged themselves in every way possible and made one of the most beautiful movies of all time. It's sad to see that it didn't seem to do that financially, and but it's on Netflix. If you have not seen it, you need to watch Koopa on the Two Strings. It's also the second animated film ever to be nominated for a Best Visual Oscar. The only other one being The Nightmare Before Christmas, so hey, it all comes around. But I'm gonna stop here because right now, this is the peak of stop motion, guys. Koopa on the Two Strings is where we're at right now. This shows where we're at right now with stop motion, with what we can do with the art form, what is possible, and how far it can be pushed. Now I'm interested to see where it goes from here. I know Leica is making another Another movie called The Missing Link, which should come out soon. So who knows what that will be like? And really, who knows what's in the cards for the future of stop motion? Thanks to companies like Leica, it lives on, and I'm sure people will be using it for generations. The history is incredible, and I'm just excited to see where the future takes it. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. Are you a fan of stop motion? Do you know any of these films? Do you not? Let me know in those comments down below. If you want to consider helping out the roundtable, you can check us out on Patreon. There you can get exclusive access to scripts and avatars. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay in the loop with all things animation. Guys, I'm Retro Nemo. This is a tale from animation history and I'll see you next time.